Hey guys, welcome to Storytime with Candace and Alyssa. Yay! So you guys, we made it. We're on our last fruit of the spirit. So the last fruit of the spirit we're gonna talk about today is self-control. So since we've made it through the whole fruit of the spirit, you've done the whole series with us, we've learned so much about God's character and what he means to us. And so now, Let's sing the song. I know you guys know this song. We do it in Sunday school all the time. It's all about the fruits of the spirit. We're gonna get them drilled into your brain so you know exactly what they are. Now I'm gonna be playing my guitar, so I can't really do the actions well while I'm playing my guitar. So I'm expecting you guys to do all the actions you know at home. And if you don't know them, make something up. It'll be fun. So let's have fun with our song and we'll see you on the other side. So go find your parents, find your pets, find your stuffed animals. Let's make some grapes. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. If you want to be a grape, then you might as well hear it. Cause you can't be the fruit of the spirit. Cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. guys, I hope you had fun with our song. So how'd you do? Did you get them all? That's such a fun song. I love it when we do that one in Sunday school. So today we're going to talk about self-control. So the main idea behind self-control is that I can choose to control my actions, words, and responses. Self-control is saying no to things that are not good for me and yes to what is good for me. It means listening and acting how God wants me to rather than reacting or doing what I want to. It means fighting against the temptation to sin and keeping my emotions, thoughts, and actions in control. 
So today's verse is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Hmm, how could we remember that? Let's see. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Should we try it one more time? For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Good job, guys. 2 Timothy 1, 7. All right, guys, for our story today, we are going to do one more story from the Jesus Storybook Bible. So today's story is going to be about when someone did not practice very good self-control and let temptation win. So let's see what happened when that happened in our Bible story. The Terrible Lie Adam and Eve lived happily together in their beautiful new home, and everything was perfect for a while, until the day when everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. Satan had once been the most beautiful angel, but he didn't want to be just an angel. He wanted to be God. He grew proud and evil and full of hate, and God had to send him out of heaven. Satan was a seething with anger and looking for a way to hurt God. He wanted to stop God's plan stop this love story right here. So he disguised himself as a snake and went into the garden. Now God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Don't eat the fruit on that tree, God told them. Because if you do, you'll think you know everything. You'll stop trusting me. And then death and sadness and tears will come. You see, God knew if they ate the fruit, they would think they didn't need him, and they would try to make themselves happy without him. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him, and a life without him wouldn't be life at all. As soon as the snake saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? The serpent whispered. If he does, why won't he let you eat that nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into her ears and sunk down deep into her heart like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly she didn't know anymore. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You don't need God. One small taste, that's all, and you'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit up and ate some, and Adam ate some too. And a terrible lie came into the world. It would never leave. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children, God doesn't love me. And it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. A dove flew from Adam's hand. A deer darted in the thicket. It was if, as if they were frightened by something. A chill was in the air. Something strange was happening. They had always been naked, but now they felt naked and wrong, and they didn't want to see anyone to see them, so they hid. Later that evening, as God was taking his walk, he called to them, children. Usually Adam and Eve loved to hear God's voice and would run to him, but this time they ran away from him and hid in the shadows. Where are you? God called. Hiding, Adam said, we're afraid of you. Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? God asked them. Adam said, Eve made me do it. What have you done? God asked. Eve said, the serpent made me do it. A terrible pain came into God's heart. His children hadn't just broken the one rule, they had broken God's heart. They had broken their wonderful relationship with him, and now he knew everything else would break 
God's creation would start to unravel and come undone and go wrong. From now on, everything would die, even though it was all supposed to last forever. You see, sin had come into God's perfect world and it would never leave. God's children would always be running away from him and hiding in the dark. Their hearts would break now and never work properly again. God couldn't let his children live forever, not in such pain, not without him. There was only one way to protect them. You will have to leave the garden now, God told his children, his eyes filling with tears. This is no longer your true home. It's not the place for you anymore. But before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them and then sent them away on a long, long journey out of the garden, out of their home. Well, in another story, it would all be over and that would have been that, the end, but not this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day he would get his children back. One day he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day he would wipe every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would forget him and run from him deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him. Lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. I will come to rescue you. And when I do, I'm going to do battle against the snake. I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the sadness you let in here. I'm coming back for you. And he would. One day, God himself would come. Hey guys, welcome to snack time. So today we are going to make some apple donuts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your apple and you're going to slice it. Actually, you're gonna get your mom or dad to slice it for you. And we're gonna slice all the way through it. Now, we're gonna throw the ends in my little garbage bowl here. Let's keep going. You can make them however thick you want. That's about how thick I'm doing mine. So let's see how many we get here. slices here. Next, I've got um, a frosting tip where you can find something else that's a circular shape to cut out the core in the center. So we're just gonna squish it around there and poke it out there. Have to try to get the core out. Okay, so let's see here. my apple centers to set that off to the side. So now you should have a bunch of little donuts. We are going to put some yummy stuff on them. 
You could do all kinds of toppings, peanut butter, um, you could do like the apple nachos and do caramel if you really wanted. You could maybe do cream cheese of some kind. I'm gonna do Nutella. So, Nutella, and you're just gonna spread it on top of your apple like you're doing a frosted donut. There we go. Oh, yum. Perfect. Oh, I'm getting Nutella everywhere. All right. Perfect. Hmm. So there, my donut is frosted. And next, you're gonna take some granola and you're gonna sprinkle it on top. Give your apple donuts a little extra crunch. So let's see here. I'm just gonna a little bit in my hand and then just kind of sprinkle it on top those little crunchy good bits there we go all right so let's see here oh doesn't that look delicious there is my apple donut awesome enjoy your snack guys all right, are you guys ready to do a craft? So today's craft is going to be kind of reminiscent of the story we read. So we read about Adam and Eve and the terrible lie. And Adam and Eve didn't show very good self-control in that story, did they? So we're gonna make something that helps remind us of that. We're going to make a snake apple mobile, okay? So you need a piece of green or whatever color you want for your snake, paper and you need probably some red for an apple. And we've got some string and some apples and some scissors and some markers and things, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda cut our green paper in a circle to make the snake. All right. So, there we go. All right. Now we're gonna shape part of this into a larger piece for the snake's head. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna keep cutting around and around in a circle. There we go. So you're never gonna cut to the end of the paper. You're just gonna keep cutting. Oop, careful not to cut your snake's head off. There we go. Keep cutting around and around in a circle. So you have one big continuous snake. There we go. All right, and I'm just gonna, the part where I shaped his head, I'm just gonna kinda blend that in. There we go. So, see, there is my snake, all right? So, we're gonna hang our snake upside down like that, but do you know what we need in the middle of it? We need our fruit, or in this case, I'm just gonna do an apple. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna cut out kind of an apple shape here. All right. Around and around we go. There we go. Let's see here. make it a little more apple-like. There we go, and I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm gonna color that stem in dark. Just so that it's not all red. There we go. Do both sides, because since it's a mobile, you're gonna be able to see it from all angles. There we go. There's my apple. All right. So next you're going to, okay, so we're gonna put the snake at the bottom. We're gonna poke a little hole in the top here of the snake. Do that very carefully, ouch. Kind of poke myself kind of hard. So we've got a little hole in the top and we're gonna poke a little hole in our apple as well. There we go. Next, we're gonna grab the string here 
And we're just gonna unwind some string. There we go. That should be enough. All right, so cut it off here. So we're gonna push this string through the apple end. Uh-oh, all right, we can do it. There we go, so there it is on the apple side. And we're just gonna give it a little tie. And, so there's one. And, there we go. So it should be knotted, it shouldn't fall off there. Next, we're gonna do the same thing. Oh, how long do I want it? There we go. And we're gonna poke that through, the string through the hole on the snake. Just a second here. This part might be a little tricky. It's like threading a needle. Maybe a hole punch would be a good idea instead of just a little hole made by your scissors. There we go. I think that's gonna work. Perfect. So then I'm just gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm just gonna tie that to my snake's tail here. And one and two. There we go. So now my snake is dangling from the mobile. All right, snake and the apple, perfect. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my snake some eyeballs. So we've got one and then two eyeballs. So there is my snake. He is around our piece of fruit there. So I hope that you guys, when you look at this, you can remember to have self-control um, in every situation. And remember to stop and pray and ask God for help. Okay? Thank you guys. Okay, so we've learned a lot about self-control this week. And I think one of the big things that's important for us to remember is that um, we can't do this on our own. We need God's help. So do you know what? Sometimes when you think things are out of control and you just feel like you're losing, um, losing your mind and just you don't know how to handle things, just take it to God. Just stop. Take a deep breath and pray and tell him what's going on and ask him to help you. So right now we're just going to stop and pray, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you that you love and you care for each one of these kids. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to remember to stop and, and let you um, have control. And I just pray, Lord, that you would show us um, ways that we can be self-controlled and I just pray that you would extend your grace to us. I just thank you so much for all of this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay guys, we'll see you next time.